Tomorrow marks the 25th anniversary of one of the worst fires locals ever lived through. And of course, we're talking about the Painted Cave Fire. That inferno destroyed more than 400 Goleta homes and businesses in a matter of hours. News Channel 3 senior reporter John Palmentary was there on June 27th, 1990. And John, the fire started at the spot you're standing at right now. We are at the point of origin, and for those of us who are here, we'll never forget this fire. Investigators called it intentionally set in a neighborly dispute between one property owner and another, and that property owner was convicted in a civil case, but not in a criminal case. The DA at the time said there wasn't enough evidence, but it was one heck of a firestorm. Temperatures were over 100 degrees. Winds were coming out of this canyon and heading right towards the Goleta Valley at 75 miles an hour. People could barely grab their belongings and run. One person, Andrea Gurka, lost her life. For firefighters and residents who lived through this, the losses and the size of the fire, they say, were unprecedented. Uh, the fire officials worried about a big one, and the big one is happening right now. It was the devastating fire people were fearing, and the most destructive fire they ever saw. Ladies and gentlemen, please leave this room and leave it now. Erupting from San Marcos Pass at Painted Cave Road on June 27, 1990. A massive blowtorch of flames driven by 75 mile an hour winds and temperatures over 100 degrees took aim at the Goleta Valley west of Santa Barbara. Our anchors, Debbie Davison and King Harris, warned residents of the peril ahead. It has been a hellish afternoon for firefighters in the Santa Barbara County. Another fire has now broken out near the Painted Cave area. And then it made this incredible sound, you know, this roaring noise. It sounded like a bunch of express trains going down. Painted Cave resident Ted Adams was on the pass when the flames broke out. And then when it jumped the freeway, all, all bets were off. The fire was furious for hours. From then on, it was just a chaotic, very humbling uh, night. Chief Eric Peterson was in his third year as a firefighter. He saw nearly 500 houses, apartment complexes, businesses, and other structures destroyed. It was kind of uncharted territory for everybody that was working that day. Um, I think it's safe to say that there are very few people who had ever seen anything like that. It was like living in a graveyard up here for a year. It was just sad. Coming back to her home on Camino del Rio, still standing with others in ashes, Cavell Neely said her son saved the property but was hospitalized. He had kind of burned his eyes being in here in the smoke and hot for so long. A scorched page from a children's book was on her porch and it read, Thank you dear God for the sleep through the night. Thank you dear God for the glad morning light. I thought, oh my gosh, how touching. And these days, there are certainly stricter building codes for the homes that have now gone back into those communities. But up here in the mountain community, they have formed their own radio station, volunteer painted cave fire department. They have the Wildland Residents Association, and they are organized and do respond at the first sign of smoke or flames. Reporting live from the point of origin of the painted cave fire 25 years ago, John Palmentary, News Channel.